that window's not supposed to be there. Hello, everyone. Here we are. It's time for another quiz. And uh, I'm not going to lie, a little bit flustered tonight, not quite going according to plan. So there's going to be a little bit of fiddling about going on. But uh, I've unmuted myself. You can hear me. Hopefully you can see me. I can hear myself in the other room. Yeah, so that's all good. And uh, yeah, we're here. Hello and welcome. And uh, I know there's loads of chat going on. So thank you very much for that. Emma's here. Jigs is here. Steve's here. Rob, Leona, Joanne. Uh, Julian, God bless me, Lawrence, Dan, who else are we doing? I'm just doing a quick, uh, quick scroll through here. Uh, Di, uh, Cat and Fish, no idea what your real name is. Caitlin, hi there, how you doing? Uh, Lawrence Michael, I know that uh, I've got Alan, Steve, just scroll, scroll, scroll here. And um, yeah, all great. So great to see you there. And uh, of course, I know we've got some. Um, Oh, Stephen there, sorry. So I'm just going through all of them. So uh, yeah, Michael, absolutely brilliant. So let's get to the uh, end of the kit, end of the uh, stuff there. Hi, Mel, good to have you there as well. So the apologies, looking over at the uh, chat over there, rather I shall look at you now. So that's brilliant. So here's here's the format for the tonight, if you haven't done it before. And Frederick, hello, sorry, I missed you in, in my list there. Um, Always first one in, always gets the best seat in the house. So great to have you there, Frederick. And uh, yeah, so format for tonight, if you haven't done it before, very, very easy. You, what you need to get is a, a second window open, uh, either on, the, on another device, another internet device, or using uh, a split screen, with, you know, open up another browser window, open up a different browser, and go to kahoot.it. That's K A H. Double O T dot I T. The link is underneath here. So you should be able to see that quite easy. Just click on that, it will take you straight there. Now, something a little bit different this week, this time around. If you're having trouble with Kahoot, if you can't get it to work, if it's just not, not doing it for you, we've set up a score sheet. So you can, and there's another link underneath for that. You can download that and print it. And then all you've got to do is put a tick in the box that corresponds with your answer. Then make a note of uh, if you're right or wrong as we go. Don't leave it to the end. We're not going to go through all the questions at the end. We're going to be marking them as we go through after each question. So mark if you've got a point. It's one point per question if you're doing it on the score sheet. Turn them up at the end. Put them in the, in the chat if you want, and we can see how you compare against the leaderboard. Now, if you do take part in Kahoot, uh, and I'll be giving the pin for that very soon, don't worry, you can't do anything until I give you the pin number. Once you've got that, you can then sign in with your team name and you're ready to go. With Kahoot, there's uh, a thousand points available per question. And the quicker you answer, the more points you get. The more questions you get correct in a row, the more points you get. And it's set up that way to try and encourage people not to Google. And please don't Google the questions. That's just cheating. It takes all the fun out of it. Absolutely no point in doing so. So that, that's the format for the evening. So if you've just joined us, you need to head over on a separate window to kahoot.com. Oh no, sorry, kahoot.it and open up another browser window. Wait for the pin number. That will be coming fairly soon. Uh, what, how are we doing for time? 7.21. Uh, we'll start the quiz properly at 7.30, so just make sure everyone's got in, and uh, I'll be giving the pin number out about five minutes' time, so you've got plenty of time to get in there. And, uh, yeah, um, someone's just saying they can't, they can't type quick enough for uh, Google, so that's absolutely fine. That, that does stop people. You've got officially 90 seconds to answer the question. Now, because there's a, a, a time delay from when I press the button to reset the counter to when you see it on screen. So what will happen is that your answer pad will reset, but I haven't given you the question yet. And there's a, a time lag that uh, YouTube put in and also that uh, just the internet puts in anyway, depending on your connection, that's how, how, slow, you can, how slow it's gonna be. But you've got 90 seconds um, on screen to answer the question, which means you'll probably get at least 60 seconds per question to answer. So plenty of time to think about it, plenty of time to get your answer in. 
um, no one should get timed out. We had a situation recently where we had a, a, a trial run with the quiz and I think someone had got lagged behind. So make sure that you've got the little live uh, symbol up wherever that is on the screen there that says that you're watching it live. If you've, if you've lagged and you're sort of 15, 20 seconds behind already, you're gonna lose that time from your availability to answer the question. Okay, so uh, in the chat, if you can all tell me if the, if, the, um, if the volume's okay, if you can see me okay, if everything's good there, um, and we will get started fairly soon. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, get going in a minute. I'll just keep an eye on the chat as we go. Um, so if you've just joined us, uh, don't forget Kahoot.it to take part in the online scoring system. Um, there's 50 pounds up for grabs tonight. Whoever wins, uh, doesn't get 50 pounds, unfortunately, but it, they get to nominate the charity that it goes to. So if you uh, if you do, then you can uh, you know be, be thinking about that, that if you want to about uh, what charity you might like to donate your prize to. So okay, so uh, thank you, Frederick. Thank you, Alan. Uh, appreciate that. Um, oh, okay, I think Frederick means not PK. Um, are they nuts or something? I don't know. It's KP, isn't it? The nuts. But uh, there we go. So, yeah, we're uh, very soon going to give out the uh, pin number. So if you haven't, or the pin, uh, if you haven't got into Kahoot.it yet, now's the time to get there. Get your second window open and get ready. We'll uh, get the quizzes. We'll get the uh, the teams up very, very soon. If you haven't got your team name thought of already, time to think about it now. Um Emma's going to give us all the answers. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> so, thanks very much. We've got what well, we got? Sixty-six people out there. Fantastic. Thank you all for joining in tonight. That's really good fun. Um, really great to have you out there. Of course, there's probably not a lot else going on tonight, so that's why we've done so well. But uh, it's it's all a bit of fun and. Ultimately, that's what we're here for tonight, just to have a bit of a laugh, a bit of fun, and uh, hopefully you might even learn something. Uh, probably nothing important, nothing that's going to be life-changing, but you might find a few things out that you thought, well, I didn't know. I've got a favourite question tonight. I will tell you about that as we go through. So how are we doing for time? 25 past. We've got 65 people there. Someone's disappeared, but that's fine. Uh, Emma, I've... I, I, Emma, don't worry about giving out the right answers. All the right answers will be on screen tonight. I'm going to give you all the answers and some red herrings as well. So you've got to work out which one's the right answer. It is all... Uh, um, I've only... My, oh, no, the only you can't take part. You did so well last time. So, yeah, it is going to be a case of uh, multiple choice. So the, the questions will come up, and then you need to put the answer and... Uh, that's fine. Steve, yeah, I'm going to ask questions that you know the answers to. You just don't know you know the answers to them yet. So you'll be fine with that. All right. So let's get the Kahoot window up if we can. So you want to press the right buttons. It's always the first time for me to do that. Um, there we go. There's the Kahoot button. I didn't actually mean to do that, but there we are. We we're, we're there anyway. So no, that's me. That's the wrong way around. And that's the one I really wanted. Wow, Nathaniel, that was up there for a second and you were in there. So fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so Nathaniel's there already. There's the code number 6558072. Pop that in and you should see your name come up in a second. Just need to move something off the back of the chair and get myself comfortable. Steve, hi. Great to see you. Not seen you for a long time. So uh, good to have you out there. Wow, that's uh, that's filling up quickly. That's brilliant. Uh, thank you so much. Let's see if we can just um, change this window a little bit and uh, stretch that out and get a few more people on there. There we are. Is that better? I think that's better. So who we got there? Toby's turning. J two hats. Caitlin's dad. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to start to pronounce half of these, just in case as well. I was uh, die the death. Uh, Kyle Silks, Steve, Kyle, thanks for putting us up on um, uh, the uh, Instagram earlier on. It was a tree, turn the corner, lost in wood, um, just scrolling around. Penfold, I know who that is. Caitlin the Cat, Jules back again, Nathaniel, uh, Dan the CDA, Frederick, uh, who have I missed? Woodbury, uh, uh, wow, 
gosh this is brilliant sally and ian mick snotty drop hi steve <laughs> i shouldn't say who's who really should i so uh, yeah um would do Stephen. hi thanks for letting us use your picture in this week's newsletter that was really appreciated that's good fun uh who else we got there lost in wood mick i think Castafi. Castafi. i don't know um peter h bb uh anyone i've missed twists and turns are back again the winners of our first ever quiz back for the virtual weekender so uh, that was good fun good to have you back i know who that is but i'm not going to let on and uh yeah we are we're still working on uh things for the, the wood turning weekend and stuff at the moment folks we're not sure how's that background by the way is that off-putting um i'm trying to make it look like i know what i'm doing like i'm, I'm intelligent so if that's a little bit off-putting in, in the back there do let me know 71 people watching at the moment <laughs> um silk i'm gareth i don't get that but i'm, I'm not going to try and work that one out so we've got 41 teams so far and just another minute to go before we get going so time for me to grab a drink how's the uh, kahoot music let's um let's put some kahoot music on because that's always fun hi neil oh wrong one hang on put them back on that's the one we wanted i've got too many windows open here that's the uh, problem here uh just the volume there we go that's the one i wanted so uh yeah let's um go back over here all right oh i've got my uh, my list of questions here how are we doing team wise what we got there we've got uh 42 teams raring to go so we'll get started in just a minute or two uh if everyone's in cahoots uh, that's fine is any just put it in the answers in the uh, chat for me is anyone playing not on kahoot is anyone uh filling in the just keeping a score as they go uh, which is obviously absolutely fine to do that anyone doing that um let's see and uh da, da, da. all right someone was saying earlier about some um wood turning questions there are no turning questions tonight i can guarantee you that and no, no finishes no questions on finishes either maybe i should do some of those nah, that'd be boring so uh, all right so we've got 7 30 there so i think it's probably about time we got going so let's um put this one up there we are and then i need to go to another window uh, what do i need to press next right so it's time for <laughs> I forgot what I'm doing. I tell you, it's terrible. It's time for round one, which is pot luck. So let's see what comes up in here. So let's move my questions so I can see them. And we will make a start. Here we go. Let's see if I can uh, press the right buttons for a change. Here we go. Question one coming up on our January quiz. Here we are. How many valves does the human heart have? Has it got six, two, five, or four? What do you reckon? How many hearts does the human heart have? That's hard to say, actually. I must write easier questions that I can, I can say easier. So, uh, oh, the cat and the fish. You're going to enjoy one of the questions later on. So let's see how how many uh, hearts how many valves does the human heart have? Is it six, two, five, or four? There it is pumping away there in that picture. I'm not doing too much, hopefully. And uh, what do we reckon? So plenty of time left. If you're still not sure on the answer, you will find that if everyone's answered the question, um, it will then stop. It will. Uh, and we'll finish it you had no numbers on your screen don't understand that rob you'll have you won't have numbers actually on your kahoot answer pad they'll just be the symbols and the colors yeah match the color and shape that's the one thank you steve 
Um, yeah, got that. If you haven't got there, time to get there quick because the answer's coming up any second now. Um, three seconds left on my screen. So let's see. And the correct answer is, of course, four. Yep, most of you knew that. Uh, 36 of you are getting that right. Four. Uh, uh, no one thought it's five. That's good. So let's see what's happened with the scoreboard straight away. Uh, last, there was a bit of a, a turn up for the books last time round with a, uh, well, we'll see anyway. Um, oh, hang on. I think someone's getting excited there. Let's see. And in first place, there we have oh, Tinker in first place, Nathaniel second, Steva, Caitlin's dad, and then Dan in the top five. Well done. Absolutely brilliant. Um, that's great. There's really not many points between it there. So uh, well done, everyone. Absolutely fantastic. All right, let's move on to the next question. Um, okay, Emma, obviously, maybe, I don't know if Emma got that right or not, but she's not quite on the leaderboard. Ah, all right, Steve Ash, just leave the, uh, just use the, the symbols, mate. You know, that's why we've got a, a square diamond circle and a triangle. So that hopefully you'll be fine with that. All right, let's move on to the next question. Here we go. Question two, and it is, who wrote the book 101 Dalmatians? Was it Dodie Smith? Was it J.M. Barry? P.L. Travers? Or Roald Dahl? Steve Temple Boy, you're late. You've missed the first question already. Uh, Dodie Smith, J.M. Barry, P.L. Travers, or Roald Dahl? Who wrote 101 Dalmatians? Those cute little puppies there. But who wrote the book? Who knows their literature? Dodie Smith, J.M. Barry, P.L. Travers, or Roald Dahl? 101 Dalmatians. Lots of answers coming in. Still time for a few more. Let's stop messing around with that screen. 40 answers in so far. Less than 30 seconds left to get your answers. And so you should, Steve. It's good to have you here anyway. Thanks for being there. So time's nearly up. On question two, and the correct answer is Dodie Smith. Oh, that was good. That, that kind of spread you out a little bit there. So uh, every you know, every answer chosen. Um, how come I've only got coloured shapes and words? I really don't know what you're seeing there, Stephen. Um, no, I really I don't understand what you what you're seeing. So I, I can't actually answer you. Uh, right. Okay. So Dodie Smith is the correct answer. Well done. 11 of you got that right. Um, let's see what that, how that's mixed up the scoreboard. Wow. That's a complete change, I think, actually. So brilliant. Lots of, uh, lots of people moving up there on uh, everyone moving up. And so a complete new top five. Jigsaw, Shed, Grassy, Roderick and he. I wonder if that's supposed to be, in, I don't know. Uh, Lost in Wood and D and G. So, uh, yeah, brilliant. No names to the shapes. There won't be names to the shapes, Stephen. You just need to click the shape or the color. Yeah, it, it cahoots clever, not quite that clever. So uh, just click the color of, uh, according, uh, corresponding to the uh, picture on the screen. Yeah. So well done. Big change around there in the, uh, in the top five. And we're going to move on to the next question. Question three coming up. And it's, who said you only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough? Was it Mother Teresa? Was it Mae West? Oscar Wilde? Or Neil Armstrong? Who would have said that? You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. Could have been any of those. Mother Teresa? Mae West? Oscar Wilde? Neil Armstrong? They're all good for a quote. 
but which one uh, which one said this one you only live once but if you do it right once is enough Stephen, glad you caught up with us brilliant well done I, I really can't make them any bigger than that. That's, I mean, they're very, very clear on the screen here. Uh, you need to make your screen perhaps bigger or, or something. There's no way to, uh, I, can't, I can't adjust the, ty uh, the, the typeface on that, sorry. I do read them out though. So it's who said you only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. We've got Mother Teresa may west oscar wilde or um neil armstrong okay what i'm going to do i'm going to put that full screen on there i don't know if that's going to make a lot of difference for you there we go the correct answer well done 15 of you um is may west well done so i'm just fiddling around with all the different settings here at the moment um 20 of you thought it's Oscar Wilde. He's always so good for a quote, but it wasn't him this time round. It, it was, in fact, uh, uh, May West with that one. So that's brilliant. All right, let's see where we're doing on the scores. Grassy stays in first place. Twists and turns rushing up there. Harvey and Marie, Jigsy Shed and File Coast coming up as well. So lots of... Uh, lots of uh, gains there harvey and marie has the highest answer streak of three which means you've got all three questions right so far so well done absolutely brilliant um emma you can't blame roy that's really not okay maybe you can all right so let's move on to the next question uh, fairly quickly uh it's a cute one this one and it's what is a baby hedgehog called uh is it a pup is it a kit is it a hedgling or is it a hoglet? Baby hedgehog. What would you call that? Or spiky, I suppose, really. But is it a pup, a kit, a hedgling or a hoglet? What do we reckon? Di, is that any easier for you now to see? I can't see myself anymore, but that's fine so 37 answers in and uh where are we with that uh 51 seconds to go is it a pup a kit a hedgling or a hoglet what do we reckon and just so cute i mean how cute is that that is lovely isn't it Die, there's so much I could say about that comment, but I'm not going to because I would get in trouble. 20 seconds left, people. Baby hedgehog. A pup, a kit, a hedgling, or a hoglet. So, um... <laughs> the owner, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it just be gorgeous? So let's have a look and see what we, uh, what we find out. So, a baby hedgehog is called a hoglet. Isn't that brilliant? It is called a hoglet. I think a hedgling is quite nice as well. I, I would go with hedgling, but it is a hoglet. So uh, that's a baby hedgehog. So let's see where we go with the scores after that one. And, oh, Grassley is really going for it tonight. Still in first place there. Bill and, Patric Bill and Patricia moving up there. Uh, Steve Ash is the highest climber up 11 places. I don't know what position that puts you in, Steve, but you're doing well. Well done. Twists and turns, still fighting there in second place. Harvey and Marine Jigsaw Shed in uh, third and fourth. Well done. Moving on to the next question. And it's who knows their comics. In the original Batman comics and the TV series, what colour is Robin the Boys Wonders cape? Is it yellow? He didn't have a cape. Is it a trick question? Was it black or was it red? So what do we reckon? What colour was Robin's cape? Was it yellow? Did he really not have a cape? Was it black or was it red? 
and just to be sure this is the original robin as he first appeared so there have been lots of different incarnations of robin uh but this is in the in the original tv in original comics and in the original in the tv series as well and there's old adam west there in his batman costume in black and white so if you only watched batman in black and white back in the day then yeah you're in trouble Julian, yeah, every time I see that on Only Fools and Horses, it cracks me up every time. Uh, it's brilliant. Right, but what's the answer? Is it yellow? Didn't he have a cape? Is it black? Was it red? 23 seconds to go. Ignore the, uh, the way the colours have worked out on the screen. You know, that's just completely at random. So what's the correct answer? Time's running out. five four three and the correct answer is yellow there you go that's uh that's the cover of detective comics when robin first turned up and there he was with his yellow cape let's see how we got that right yeah 15 of you got that right well done um i did get a, a nice spread of answers there again which is this is great so uh but yellow is the definite answer as you saw so let's move on and see what happened to the scoreboard after that one wow grassy you're really going for it there nathaniel in second place well done knows his robin roderick and he or her i don't know sally and ian well done four in a row on an answer streak uh creeping up there and twists and turns slips back into fifth there but still doing really well so that's fantastic well done and generally there's really not much between the the top five there i don't know how the uh the lower echelons are doing but there's uh everything to play for so uh well done uh well done uh well done emma for getting that right uh i think technically amanda that uh uh, Batman's cape is black. It's just shown. It's just painted as blue in the comics because black would look too black anyway. But uh, that's another thing. So coming up next is actually my favourite question of the quiz. It's not particularly difficult, but it's my favourite question because it's something that you don't think of, and it, it's all to do with the number eight. So generally speaking, oct the prefix oct like octopus, octagon, octogenarian means eight, but if that's the case, and you get double points for this one, why is October the 10th month? Yeah, so it should be the 8th, surely. So maybe it used to be the 8th month? Is it because Romans couldn't count? Is it because it's named for the Emperor Octavian? Or did Octo actually used to mean 10, and they've changed it around that way? So why, does, why is October the 8th month if Oct or octo means eight hmm so did it used to be the eighth month is it because romans couldn't really count is it because it's not, actually it's a red herring and it's named after the emperor octavian or did octo used to mean 10. have you ever thought about that october but it's the 10th month doesn't really make sense does it that's why it's my favorite question. It's something that's been in plain sight all these years, never even thought about it. So, but why? There is a reason. It's not a hard question. Hopefully you'll know it. So, why is October the 10th month? I couldn't get a picture of October, so it's an octopus. It works, doesn't it? It does the job. <laughs> So 10 seconds left. If you haven't got your answer in, time to get it in now. October. It's the 10th month, but why? Here we go. Let's find out. And it did indeed used to be the eighth month. Yeah, the, the Romans used to have, te there used to be 10 months in the year. The Romans, uh, for whatever reason, there was a reason, but I'm not sure what it was. They decided to uh, add two months on and they added them at the beginning rather than at the end so when you think about it september sept is normally seven you know october november is normally nine and december dec deck is normally for ten so all the numbers were put out um 
the Romans used to rename the months after the after emperors and the like. They obviously got fed up. They got as far as August, and then they didn't bother after that. So there you go. Um, yeah, indeed, July and August were um, were named for emperors. Uh, I think some of the other others were named after uh, other thing, other people or other deities or something. But uh, yeah, they obviously got fed up of doing it and didn't bother after that. Let's see how that uh, affected the quiz. I told you I like that question. I can't I can't help but go on about it. Here we go. Also, big changes there. People taking advantage of the uh, uh, the double points there. Grass is still in first place though. Sally and Ian in second. Roderick and he twists and turns. Peter H making a, a first appearance there uh so well done and uh what have we got there uh, yeah tough round there three players lost their answer streak of three so uh yeah there we go and that was the end of the first round so we've got round two coming up now here we go and this is all about january finally enough so there we go so uh let's see what we can find out about january here we go and in 1975, who had a hit with the song January? Was it Sailor? Was it Magic? Was it Pilot? Or was it Barbara Dixon? Who sang January? There we go. Was it Sailor? Was it Pilot? Magic? Or Barbara Dixon? Who knows the answer on that one? So I'm going to come back on screen, I think. There we are. There you are. Just show them here. I haven't wandered away anywhere. <laughs> Emma, if that's the thing you've learned today, I'm, I'm, we're wasting our time with the quiz. Kyle. 18 years before you but doesn't matter it was it was you know it still gets played all the time especially at january gosh apparently it was written after a, a character in a book a, a girl in the book called january it wasn't about the month at all um but it was a hit in january in 1975 so um but who sang the song sailor pilot magic or barbara dixon I wasn't that old, Stephen, so, uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, Pilot is the answer. Well done. Um, yeah, uh, Pilot sang the song. Uh, 11 of you going for Barbara Dixon. Uh, her song was January, February. I think it was a different year as well. I think it was a little bit later than 75. So, uh, well done, 22 of you getting that one right. Uh, those of you who picked Magic, Magic was the follow-up, was one of the other songs by Pilot. So I was just trying to be a, a little bit sneaky there. Well done, Roy, for getting that one right. Brilliant. Okay, here we go. Let's see what that's done to the uh, leaderboard. And absolutely nothing to the order of the leaderboard. So uh, everyone there obviously got it right. Well done, Stephen, getting that right as well. And uh, let's move on where we go to the next question here. So this is uh, another question about January. The whole round's about January. And this one is, where does the name january come from is it is it named after a january the goddess of spring does jan signify start in latin was it named by a popular vote because after all it was added on later or is it named after janus the god of beginnings so uh january why is it called january and now we're talking about the month not a girl in the book and uh but is it january the goddess of spring does Jan signify star in Latin? Is it named by a popular vote? That would have been a nice thing to do, wouldn't it? Or is it named after Janus, the god of beginnings? What are we reckoning here? Answers coming in thick and fast. But which is the correct one? Still got 30 seconds to go, according to this. I annuary, the goddess of spring. Jan, which signifies start in Latin. Is it named by popular vote or is it Janus, the god of beginnings? That's gonna 
Let's going to see who knows the answer to this one. Steve's got a degree in history. Well, I hope you get this one right then. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah. It's named after Janus, the god of beginnings. Well done, much of you getting that one right. Managed to, managed to trick a couple of you. I really don't know if Iannuary exists. I don't think that she does. The goddess of spring. Sorry. Um, but, uh, we'll see. So uh, let's have a look and move on to see what that's done to the, to the scoreboard. Oh, Sally and Ian slipping back there. Grassy's still in first place. Answer streak of three on fire. Look at that, their little flame symbol. Um, so there's three in a row they've got right. Well done there. Absolutely fantastic. And so we're going to move on to the next question. And uh, it's all about the beast from the east. So every year, it seems nowadays, we get warned to expect the beast from the east. But when was that? When was the first one? When was the phrase first coined? The beast from the east. When was that first uh, put up? Was it 2004? Was it 2018, 2016, or 1978? Beast from the East. When when was that first coined? When, when did we first get one of those? 2004, 2018, 2016, or 1978? And yeah, Grassy, who are you? Are you going to tell us? Put it in the chat. Are you going to own up? 2004, 2018, 2016, 1978, Beast from the East. It's pretty bad today, actually. There's snow around and uh, all sorts. We uh, managed to avoid it, fortunately. I hope wherever you are that you're not suffering too much. Grassy is AI <laughs> or Al. I'm not sure what you mean there, Stephen. 2004 for the Beast from the East. 2018, 2016 or 1978. Seems like it's been around for ages, doesn't it? So what's the correct answer? And the correct answer is 2018. It's only about, what, three years old now. But, uh, yeah, it, it's not that old, the idea of a beast from the east. So uh, 2018 is the first one. AI. Yeah, I thought that's what you meant, Stephen. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay, Stephen, we're going to take your word for that one as well. So well done, 22, if you're getting that right. And let's move on, see how that's done in the, uh, uh, in the, um, in the scoreboard. Oh, look at that. Roderick and he jumping up in the first place. Uh, what we've got there, Peter H., on fire answer streak of six going into second place and grassy slipping down third place bill and patricia sally and ian uh coming up on third and fourth so absolutely great emma's in 10th place well done that's uh there's there's still hope for everyone so uh congratulations emma brilliant so another question about january coming up and uh this is about january sales who's been out to them and when was no, I've got my questions in the wrong order. Done it. All these people were born on January the 8th, but in which order? It's the first to the last. So who was born first out of this lot? Elvis Presley, David Bowie, Shirley Bassey, or Stephen Hawking? So uh, which one is, uh, who was born first there? And what you've got to do with this if you're on Kahoot is drag the question, drag the answers across and press the K for Kahoot to let it know that you finished. So all of these celebs were born on January the 8th, believe it or not. Uh, must be something about January the 8th. But uh, what order? Who would be the oldest? Uh, who was born first? Elvis Presley, David Bowie, Shirley Bassey, or Stephen Hawking? It would be fantastic if they were all born in the same year. And it was a trick question, but that's really not the case. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've not been that mean. And look at Shirley Bassey's outfit there. Isn't that fantastic? Dame Shirley, of course. But uh, who was born first? Elvis, Bowie, Bassey or Hawking? Ha! 
Hurry up, not much time left. 11 seconds, click the K, drag them in, click the K. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Time running out. Oh, there we go. Bush. So there's the correct answer. Uh, there's the correct order. Elvis Presley was born first in 1935. Um, then Shirley Bassey, 1937. Stephen Hawking, 1942. And David Bowie in 1947. So that's the correct order. It's uh, Elvis then Shirley Bassey, then Stephen Hawking, then David Bowie. And uh, yeah, some of you got that right by the look of it. So well done. That's great. And uh, that's just confirming there the order. Let's see what that's done to the scoreboard. Twists and turns rushing up there to, to the second place. Grassy dropping again the fourth. Bill and Patricia and uh, what we got there, Roderick and he still in first place. Uh, Roderick, is that suppose uh, is that Roderick and someone that we can't put on that wouldn't fit on there? Let me know. Let me get the name right. And Tinker, uh, our, our first place uh, from the and uh, on the first question, up five places, the highest climber. So I think the next question is. Well, I don't know what the next question is going to be. I'm not going to say anything about it. So uh, let's find out. I think it's about January sales. Is it? Yeah. When was the, which was the when was the first recorded January sale? Was it in 1878? Is it 1962? 1928? Or 1955? First recorded January sale. So you're normally in December anyway, so that's really confusing. But when was it? What year? How long has January sales been going on? 1878. 1962, 1928, and 1955. I wasn't around for any of them, okay? None of those, I wasn't around for any of those dates. There you go. So, um, just saying. Temple Boy, yeah, it was in January. Thank you. Um, it was the year we were after there. So, 1878, 1962, 1928, or 1955. First recorded January sale. Yep, guessing is just as good as knowing sometimes. So if you're not sure, it's always worth a guess. Don't leave it too late. Make sure you get your answer in. You could be right. You could be wrong. But uh, if you don't try, you're never going to know. Nine seconds, eight, seven less left. Quick, quick, quick. Get your answers in. Bosch. There we go. The correct answer is 1878. That's how long January sales have been going on for. That's when the first recorded one was. So uh, well done, four of you. Just four of you getting that right. So uh, that's actually brilliant. And, you know, when we did the trial run on the quiz, believe it or not, we've practiced this. Uh, no one got that right at all. There's only about 10 or 15 people taking part, but no one got it right. So uh, well done, the four of you who did. You're ahead of the game there. Um, uh, looks like some of you didn't get it right, though. Oops. So let's see where we go with the scoreboard there. That's going to change things. No, Roderick's uh, still in first place. Sally near twists and turns. Pre-duration grass. Well done. Looking good there. So last question about January coming up. Okay, and this is about January 2018. And believe it or not, there was a, 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 a beauty contest for camels held in Saudi Arabia. But 12 of the camels were disqualified. Why would that have been? So t January 2018, 12 camels disqualified from a beauty contest. But why? Was it because there was evidence of surgical enhancements? Was it because they were too pretty? because so the owners have used Botox on their lips, or there's actually no such thing as a camel beauty contest. Look at that camel in the picture. Ah, oh, fake eyelashes. Leona, that would have been a brilliant answer, but um, it wasn't the one. But was it? It was one of these is the correct answer. Was it because there were surgical enhancements? Was because one of them was too, they were just too pretty. It's 12 of them too pretty the owners use botox on their lips 
or actually am i lying to you is there no such thing as a camel beauty contest why were 12 camels disqualified in january 2018 so uh let's see yeah they, they probably did have the hump as a result of it but uh that was such an obvious joke i didn't like to go there <laughs> Neil, maybe another time you can tell us about that. Probably not the best time at the moment from, from your comments there. So, why, oh why, were 12 camels disqualified? And I don't really expect anyone to know this one, actually. But, uh, you know, you remember it being on the news, Julian? Wow, okay. Maybe someone will know the actually know the answer rather than just a guess. There we go. Yet the owners had used Botox on their lips. I mean, just crazy, isn't it? But that's what had happened. So the uh, 12 camels all disqualified for, for cheating. They didn't cheat. It was, the, uh, it was the owners using Botox. So let's see where that takes us with the leaderboard. Um, yeah. And here we go. And a little bit of a change around there, Roderick dropped down a point, a, a place, Sally and Ian at the first. So, yeah, not too much changing, but Tinker up five places again, still, still in the, in the, in the, uh, in the running there. So well done. And that's the end of round two. So the next round coming up and happy days. It's the music round. So uh, we'll get that going with round one, with question one in the music round here we go and the question is new york london paris is it munich berlin peckham or moscow new york london paris munich berlin peckham or moscow i didn't just give the answer away did i no, I don't think I did. It's so difficult not to say the whole thing. So what is the answer? What was the question? Ah, complete the line, Emma. Munich, Berlin, Peckham or Moscow? Cat and fish, nah, this wasn't a UK group either. So, uh, can't have us on that one. Emma, it's something you either know or apparently you don't. So, uh, sadly. Worth a guess. But yeah, worth a guess. Worth a guess. And in fact, it did kind of come up in the last quiz. Here we go. And the correct answer is Munich because um, it's a line from a song. It's this one. And yeah, that was the record cover. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, what's wrong with Peckham? It's the music round. So uh, that's what's wrong with that, Stephen. Uh, that was the line from uh, uh, on, on the side of Trotter's Independence trading on their ban. So, yeah, 21 of you getting that right. Well done, Munich, because it rhymes with music. So let's see how that's affected the score. Sally and Ian still up in first, Roderick. Yep, pretty much the same top five. Silk now up four places as the highest climber. Well done. Moving on, next question coming up. And uh, which mathematical symbol provided the title of Ed Sheeran's first album? Was it minus? Was it equals? Was it plus? Or was it square root? Uh, someone got in there really quick with the answer they either know that or they're just clicking something quickly now who would do such a thing ed sheeran's first album was it minus was it equals was it plus or was it square roots
did try i did try to get a nice picture of ed sheer and that was the best picture i could find of ed sheer and what can you say minus equals plus or square root which symbol is the th is the uh, first album for ed sheeran <laughs> Stephen, i'm saying nothing to that either of you <laughs> you two are obviously in league together 26 seconds left 41 answers in i think most people have got an answer for this one already so uh but yeah mathematical symbol ed sheeran's first album minus equals plus or square roots square root that'd be a great uh, great title for a song wouldn't it a great title for an album i don't know let's see and the answer is plus 26 if you're getting that right well done uh six of you going for square root yeah brilliant uh, yeah, check. that works for me i like square root but there we are let's see where we've done on the uh so plus is the correct answer let's see where we've gone on the scoreboard there ah so the music round mixing music around mixing things around a little bit there twists and turns up into first place grassy creeping back up into second sally and Ian, peter h roderick and he roderick and who roderick tell us tell us please <laughs> filed coat up three plate filed coast up three places as the uh highest climber and i i'm with you on that one so um yeah definitely uh <laughs> right next question coming up oh this, this this one might be a bit more up your up your street might not be what were the jailer man and sailor sam searching everywhere for is it the answer band on the run love or just the way out roderick and helen oh thank you roderick i suspected it was but i didn't want to assume so what was the jailer man and sailor sam searching everywhere for was it the answer was it the band on the run was it love or was it the way out what do we reckon it's one of the ones you know or you don't i guess now try out round and our try out version of the quiz everyone got it right Jailer Man and Sailor Sam were searching everywhere for what? Stephen, music from my time as well. But I have, we do have a, a number of younger players, which is great. Lovely to have you out there, guys and girls. And uh, so I'm trying to um, mix them a little bit, mix them around a little bit. But what were they searching everywhere for? let's see a number one yeah i like that <laughs> i suspect was it a number one i don't know but uh let's find out let's see who knew the answer who doesn't there we go yeah it is the band on the run so uh yeah and i'm not going to sing it but the jailer man and sailor sam were searching everywhere for the band on the run yeah I told you i'm not going to sing it sorry but, uh yeah uh no searching everywhere i'm sure um i'm gonna go and check that now chris but i'm pretty sure that's what it was so 32 if you're getting that right well done um this is a, this is a good round to uh, mix it up a little bit and uh here we go uh twist and turn solidly in first place grassy in second there's a definite uh, battle going on there neil nine answers in a row well done absolutely brilliant um that's really good hasn't got you onto the scoreboard yet but uh, that's that's uh that's a really good achievement roderick and helen yes helen if, if yeah you just put roderick stroke helen or something that would have been easier no actually that would have been even more confusing roderick glad you didn't do that but uh yeah moving up there well done fantastic so uh we're going to move on to the next question uh slightly more modern one and uh it's which female artist headlined the one love manchester concert in 2017 was it ariana grande was it camilo cabello demi lovato or selena gomez 
should have practiced pronouncing those earlier, shouldn't I? Ariana Grande, Camilo Cabello, Demi Lovato, or Selena Gomez. One Love Manchester concert. That's not a picture of her in, in the uh, up there. That's just a, a random picture I chose. So, One Love Manchester concert. Pretty big in the news, to be honest. So, um, I'm sure you've probably heard of it. Ariana Grande, Camilo Cabello, Demi Lovato, or Selena Gomez. And hi, Scott. Good to see you out there. So most of the answers come in now. That's fine. Still got 30 seconds. If you're not sure and you're still racking your brains trying to think who was it. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's see. Ariana Grande. <laughs> Camilo Cabello. Demi Lovato. Selena Gomez. Dean Martin, Stephen, you're not that old, mate. You're not that old. Uh, One Love Manchester, who was it? Here we go. I suspect we're going to get a lot of correct answers on this. Yep, Ariana Grande, of course, it was indeed. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, 35, you're getting that one right. Well done. And here we go. Let's see what that's done to the scoreboard. Hasn't changed the order at all. So we're going to move on to the next question, which is another lyric question. And Emma, oh no, really? Oh, so uh, that's that's really messed up your chances because you would have won otherwise. I'm sure you, you were definitely in the in the running there. So uh, that's such a shame. Right, let's uh, move on. Next question coming up, and it's which song starts with this line? Flew in from Miami Beach, B O A C didn't get to bed last night flew in from miami beach boac didn't get to bed last night is it new york state of mind by billy joel is it surfing usa by the beach boys is it back in the ussr by the beatles or cc je suis un rock star by bill wyman so which song starts with that line flew in from miami beach boac didn't get to bed last night. Is it Billy Joel? The wonderful Billy Joel with New York State of Mind. Surfing USA by the Beach Boys. Back in the USSR by the Beatles. Or CC the Swedish and rock star from Bill Wyman. Who puts in and who could have put in an appearance in the next question, I think. So, what are we reckoning here? boac dates it doesn't it just yeah <laughs> this is why i kind of went with those uh those songs there folks we're coming up for the end of the uh en end of this round and it's uh that which will put us at halfway do you want to take a couple of minute break if you want to get a grab a drink grab a uh something to eat do something else uh in the comments please what do you want to, in the chat what do you want to do do you want to get do you want to take a two minute break i've got just a little bit of music and stuff lined up that uh just to keep you entertained there we go the answer is back in the ussr by the beatles so that was the correct answer uh really interesting to see that some of you didn't um <laughs> didn't get that right so again it's it's one of those ones we think wasn't that easy because come on So there you go. Yeah, the Beatles back in the USSR. So uh, yeah, brilliant. Let's see what that's done to the scoreboard. Here we go. Oh, Neil, well done. You're on to the top five. Roderick and Helen still in fourth. Sally Neil and Grassy twists and turns. Um, <laughs> Emma's in 24th place. She's just looked back at all the other questions there. So, uh, oh, well, it, there's still time, Emma. There's still time. Probably, I don't know. I don't know. Dan, 34th place. So that's fine. So last question coming up. And um, uh, then we'll, in this round, then we'll take a, a just a two and a half minute break. I'm going to grab a drink. You can grab a drink. 
and then we'll be back. So uh, last question coming up, and uh, we've just mentioned Bill Wyman. So uh, in their 2011 hit, which member of the Rolling Stones did Maroon 5 claim to have moves like? Yeah, so who do they have moves like? Was it Charlie Watts, Keith Richards, Bill Wyman, or Mick Jagger? Look at that picture, Rolling Stones, come on. <sighs> Charlie Watts, Keith Richards, Bill Wyman, or Mick Jagger. Wow, everyone got in really quick there. I didn't do that, so uh, not quite sure why that question finished so quickly. Mick Jagger is the correct answer. Well done to everyone who got that right, 30 of you. And, uh, yeah, if that question – did that question finish quickly? Apologies if it did. Either knew it if he didn't. So there we are. Mick Jagger had moves like Jagger in the song. So let's see. Um, Alien Ant Farm. Oh, nil, really. <laughs> let's see where it's done to the scoreboard. Probably not a lot, I suspect. Are uh, Roderick and Helen overtaking Sally and Ian there? Everyone else staying in pretty much the same place. So well done. Absolutely brilliant. So look, we'll, uh, we'll, we will take just a quick break. Um, let's find my uh, screen for that. Uh, the next round is going to be... Well, let's give you a little preview of the next round. There we go. The next round is the picture round. Picture this, we've called that. So uh, that's coming up soon. And uh, in the meantime, we'll have just... Who's Mick Jagger? Is he the singer? Of the Rolling Stones, yeah, Stephen, I think. So we'll take just a, about a two and a half minute break. A uh, little track coming up for you, totally at random. So grab a drink, grab something to eat, grab whatever you need to grab, and I shall see you in on the other side of this two and a half minutes. Press the right button. Is that the right button? Oh, I've forgotten how to turn this off. Hang on a sec. 
<laughs> we'll be on. There we are. That's where we were. Right. Hello again. Um, right. So, yeah, hope you all grabbed whatever you needed to grab. We're going to come up with a picture around in a moment. Before we do that, uh, obviously taking part in the background here and having lots of fun, I hope, Emma Cook. And Emma's doing our uh, Conker's Live demo on Thursday. So uh, if your Kahoot's frozen, just refresh the page. Refresh the uh, page that should do the job for you, and you sh hopefully you won't lose your existing score. Um, yeah, on uh, Thursday, Emma Cook is doing our Conquers Live demo starting at 7 15. Um, and the good news is that I'm hardly on screen at all during the evening, it will be Emma doing all the work. So, uh, come and join us for that if you can. Totally free to, to join in and watch, and uh, bound to be good fun. Uh, Emma's always. Uh, always gives a good demo brilliant camera work i have to say that because uh, uh roy does such a good job with it and uh it just just makes it so much better really does a good job with it so come and join us for that and there'll be a, a second demo in february as well so you get a, a double dose of uh, conquers live in february probably won't be a quiz uh but we'll uh, there will be two demos and uh question time the other week was a really really good success why don't i put myself on the big screen here let's just do that for a second there we go so question time went really well last week thanks to everyone who joined in and took part uh emma's out there i know so thank you emma for your work there uh great fun evening and we will be doing some more of those in the future when i can uh get myself uh, ready and organized to do that there's a lot of work behind that one but we will be coming back with question time so if you've got questions send them in and we'll try and include them on in the next uh, next time round. in the meantime there's school recently we're going to move on to the next round which as you've seen is <laughs> swoosh oh i meant to put the swoosh up for you leona hang on let me see if i can put a swoosh on for you because uh here we are hang on everyone enjoyed the swoosh oh hang on so that's just to prove that's that's the thing emma cook uh, thank you for joining us. Shouldn't be on there, but uh, she's on uh, February the fourth for us, so that's fine. We'll take Emma off of there, and we'll just do a, a quick. So there you are. Just uh, just to prove, you've still got it there, and that that will be coming back. So I've now got to try and get back to the uh, <laughs> the page I really need to do the next part. Here we go. Right. So as a quick swoosh there and moving on we've got uh, the picture round coming up so question one picture round uh rather rather happy looking rather proud looking american here but why is he famous was he the uh, fbi chief during watergate did he go on to be an infamous drug dealer is he a baseball player did he hit the most home runs in baseball or was he an astronaut? And you know, that doesn't need any qualification. Just an astronaut, that's a pretty big deal. So what? why is he famous? Was he the FBI chief during Watergate? Did he become an infamous drug dealer? Did he hit the most home runs in baseball? Or is he an astronaut? What's the answer there? Answers coming in there. So 37 answers in already. 30 seconds to go. Could have been the FBI chief in Watergate. Did he become an infamous drug dealer? Did he just hit the most home runs in baseball? Or is he an astronaut? What do we reckon? He has a very long neck. Could have been useful, actually. Perhaps. Yep, astronaut is the correct answer. It's actually Michael Collins, who was the uh, uh, the guy that went up in Apollo Eleven but didn't get to go onto the moon. They, uh, um, no, it's, it's definitely uh, Michael Collins, and uh, yeah, he he was the one who had to sort of carry on going around the moon in the um what do they call that one the command module 
uh, whilst Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin got to go and have a little wander around and plant flags and play golf. So, uh, yeah, he kind of got left behind a little bit. You have to wonder, how did they decide that? How do they think, right, do we draw straws for this or what? Who's not going to get down there? Uh, anyway, let's see what they did to the, to the uh, leaderboard. There we go. Steve Ash is creeping back, in, creeping into uh, fifth place there. Well done, Steve. And uh, uh, Filed Coast, Arsenal Trick of Three. But the, the uh, leaderboard mainly unchanged there. Let's move on. Let's have a look at the next question. And uh, I was very careful with this one. And um, looking at some of the people I've got in the chat, really pleased with that. Uh, here we go. What? Which part of the human body is shown here? Is that the liver? Is it the pancreas, the appendix, or the spleen? Which... Uh, What's that part of the human body? Obviously the part in the orange. What do we reckon that is? Is it the liver? Is it the pancreas? Is it the appendix? Or is it the spleen? And why is he blue? That's the other thing I, I'm not sure about. But uh, And why is that orange? But It's the orange part. Yep, well done, Steve. That's uh, definitely the right answer. But what actually is it? Liver, pancreas, appendix, or spleen? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be in the wrong place. Um, well done. Lots of people obviously getting that one right. Still time if you haven't put your answer in to get your answer in. So let's see if you can get all of those answers in 18 seconds left Steve I was waiting for you to come up with the bananas <laughs> oh Alan I'm sorry it's, it's crashed for you all right it's the pancreas is the correct answer Alan I'm sorry to hear that you've, uh, you're having trouble with the cahoots beyond our control completely of course um so yeah that's the uh pancreas is the correct answer yes yeah, spleen what does the spleen look like where is the spleen i must try that in a different quiz 17 of you are getting that one right well done let's see what that's done to the uh to the answer board and here we go oh grassy back up into first place roderick and helen into second twists and turns dropping to third steve ash in third in fifth and uh, Sally and Ian in fourth. Well done. Um, thank you, Leona. I'll, uh, I, I will look that up a little bit later on. All right. Okay. So you might want your sunglasses for the next question. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying because it's a flag coming up. Um, yeah. Wait, wait till you see this one. Ugh, wrong question. Where would you be if you could see this view? Man, who wrote this list out? If you can see that view, would you be at the Empire State Building, the Eiffel Tower, London Eye, or the CN Tower? So uh, where would you be if you were looking at that view? Would you be on the top of the Empire State Building, the Eiffel Tower, the London Eye, or the CN Tower? I have made that as big as I can for you. It's uh, there's not a little, lot of, not a little, uh, not a lot of scope to make it bigger. But it's as big as I can make it. But where would you be? Empire State Building, Eiffel Tower, London Eye, CN Tower. And sitting at your computer looking at the screen isn't an answer. Okay, so you can't have that one. So where would you be? Where in the world? Oh yeah, guess definitely. If you don't know the answer, always worth a guess. Try to look at that. See which side of the road are they driving on? Which river's that? Ugh. What is that a picture of? Here we go. The correct answer is Eiffel Tower. So, yeah, 28 of you getting that right. Well done. I wonder if that's because uh, 
you, you've been there and you know that lucky guess who knows doesn't matter well done 28 of you getting that one right uh fantastic work let's see where we go with the scoreboard now steve ash coming up into fourth now peter h in fifth castefi castefi cast i don't know but you're up seven places and you're the highest climber well done um Stephen, no definitely not peckham uh i can tell you that one right now here's the one you're going to need sunglasses for okay you've, you've had warning now already so the, coming up is a flag and it's actually the flag of a belgian province but which one who knows their belgian provinces okay is it east flanders is it brussels limburg or antwerp which of those belgian provinces has that flag east flanders brussels limburg or antwerp i mean it looks like a chessboard on acid doesn't it but uh yeah it's a, it's a little bit uh oh a little bit bright Neil, we are on question 22 out of 36. Your your answer pad will change before the question changes on the uh, on the screen. Before the question comes up on the screen. See, I'm glad to, I'm glad that none of your Brussels look like that. I tell you, you'd be in trouble if it did. So, but which one is it? East Flanders, Brussels, Limburg, or Antwerp? Antwerp, Antwerp. Sorry, I'm re trying to read the uh, Alan Kahoot.it. The pin number's in the corner there. Uh, let me know if you can't see it. But you should be able to see it on screen. Let's see what you can see. Yeah, you can see that. Belgian province, but which one? It is indeed Antwerp. Um, yeah, not uh, not great. Um, so that's 12 of you getting that one right well done uh, so that's a good game so i'm trying to keep up with the chat as well make sure everyone's got everything okay and uh yeah um you know I either need to refresh your i don't know if you need to refresh it or just uh, uh make sure you're on the live stream rather than on the uh on a uh, back recording sort of thing so make sure you're on live with that uh so 12 of you getting that one right Sorry, you've got too much going on here at once. And let's have a quick look and see what they did to the scoreboard. Roderick and Helen, I think that's your first time into first place. Well done on 17,000 points. Grassy in second, twist and turn, Steve Ash and Steve. -er. I don't think we've seen Steve -er before. So uh, well done into the uh, into the top five there. And D and G, highest climber up seven places. Well done. So uh Let's move on. Next question in the picture round. Question five of the picture round. And uh, da, 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 da. it made with spirit stains. Yeah. <laughs> so what is this antique device? What is this? Is it a hairpin? Is it surgical tweezers? Is it a glove stretcher? Or safety scissors? Hmm. What would that be? Hairpin, surgical tweezers, glove stretcher, or safety scissors. <laughs> Leona, that's unkind. So what would that be used for? Could it be a hairpin? Surgical scissors, surgical tweezers, sorry. A glove stretcher or safety scissors? What do you reckon? First you work this. Thirty nine answers in, twenty two seconds to go. Hairpin. Tweezers, glove stretcher, safety scissors. The owner was just bad English. 
and the correct answer is it's a glove stretcher believe it or not so uh yeah um it, it's for stretching the the fingers of ladies gloves which are always meant to be really tight so uh yeah it's uh, uh it is glove stretcher 30 of you getting that one right so either very good guessing or um you, you know things that you don't have a right to know basically so I'm, I'm not sure what to say about that let's see what they did to the scoreboard there we are oh grassy sneaking back into first place there well done uh roderick and uh, helen into second place uh brilliant uh twist and turn still there in third steven steve uh, there uh paul finley um obviously your answer came up after it was uh given out but don't put your answers in the chat please uh it is just to take part in the in the quiz so please don't answer in the chat right so uh kyle you're up five places as the highest climber so that's well done and uh so steve uh sorry stephen you're going to enjoy the next question hopefully so uh here we go and what album is this part of the cover of it's a significant part of it but what album is that is it just push play by aerosmith is it the mix by Kraftwerk? news of the world by queen and are we not men by devo actually it should be are we not men no we are devo by devo but i didn't want to fit the whole answer in so i know what it should be uh so what is it just push just push play by aerosmith the mix by Kraftwerk, news of the world by queen or are we not men by devo and yes it was a glove stretcher in the last one but what's this what slightly gory album cover what is that more importantly does anyone know why but uh it would be interesting to know Glove stretches were embarking the hunt last week. Really? Good grief. Didn't know that, obviously. COVID TV. I don't have time to watch TV. Ah. All right. So anyone know? Anyone unsure? I want to take a guess what that's the uh, album cover to? Is it Aerosmith, Kraftwerk, Queen or Devo? What are we reckoning? Last question of the picture round time's running out let's see Doo -doo. and the answer is news of the world by queen well done 20 of you getting that right knowing your albums so that's good again it's always nice to see that uh it's a good stretch a good um uh a spread of answers there a little stretch on the brain what's going on so always good to get a, a good spread of answers so um Da, 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 da. so let's move on next well done nathaniel roderick and helen sneaking back up into first place well done twists and turns is definitely after it there he's definitely he's definitely on the um on the march there uh grassy steve ash and steve are still in the top five kevin c ryan is the highest climber up six places well done so we've got about 42 of you playing so that's brilliant that's the top five can't get i can't access the others unfortunately which is a real shame it would be fun but uh yeah absolutely great well done keep it up and it's now time for round five which is we've called it just one letter uh, all will become clear in a second hopefully so uh, just one letter coming up now which country's number plates start with the letter s is it Spain? Is it Sweden? Slovakia or Switzerland? Which country's number plates start with letter S? Spain, Sweden, Slovakia or Switzerland? Now, answers coming in thick and fast. Well done. I think you're going to need the full 90 seconds on this one. But which country's number plate start with S? Spain, Sweden, Slovakia or Switzerland?
<laughs> more questions set before the industrial revolution yeah, i don't think we can get that one i'm afraid spain sweden slovakia or switzerland which one uh which one of those countries <laughs> has the it starts with the letter s here we go and the correct answer is sweden well done everyone so um uh, is it normal if it takes a long time before you know if you're right yeah it can be it, it can take a little while for kahoot to catch up with you so uh, don't worry so yeah the correct answer is sweden um obviously spain is espania um so uh yeah that wouldn't be and switzerland is ch so yeah definitely not any of those sweden correct answer uh the answer doesn't show till timer ends so steve if that's the case you may well be uh you need to make sure you've got the little live button i think it should be up in red for you so make sure you're on, you're watching this live as opposed to lagging behind a little bit you've got a full 90 seconds so you really should get that in there um it'll be fine um right um paul finley uh you put green there which was wrong answer anyway but please do not put answers in the chat uh thank you so um that'd be fine uh, if you want to put your answer if you want to write your answer down keep your tab of the score how many you get right that's fine but don't put answers in the chat all right let's see what that's done to the scoreboard and roderick and helen staying in first place grassy into second steve ash twist and and steve uh, well done chris is making a comeback with uh three in a row neil ralph that's a crawl but you beat me to it i, I did wonder that but uh, i didn't like to say it okay uh emma the thunderbirds round Ow. maybe i don't know we'll see maybe another time let's move on to the next question it's a james bond question actually and it's which of these actors haven't played q in the james bond films so is it desmond llewellyn richard Ayoade, john cleese of Ben Wishaw, Wyshaw, who hasn't played Q, or which one of those hasn't played Q in the James Bond films? Desmond Llewellyn, Richard Ayoade, John Cleese, or Ben Wyshaw? It's got to be Wyshaw, hasn't it? There's the real star, is the Aston Martin, of course, but uh, yeah, Q, the quartermaster, of course which one <laughs> just wait and see emma just wait and see desmond llewellyn richard ayoade john cleese or ben wyshaw which one of those haven't played q in the james bond film remember on the just one letter round uh had some fun with this one and don't forget as well you're playing for 50 pounds to go to your favorite registered charity and it does need to be a registered charity but uh if you are on the leaderboard at the moment you might want to start thinking about who you might want to give that money to in the meantime let's see if we've got a, an answer coming up for this here we go and the correct answer is richard Ayoade. um yeah, I've, I've actually thought he had played the part, but he hasn't. And uh, Desmond Llewellyn was the one who, who played it in most of the films. John Cleese and Ben uh, has had a go, and Ben Wyshaw is the current Q. But Richard Ayoade hasn't played that. Um, but I think he'd be really good at it, don't you? So uh, let's see. Anyway, scobbled. Grassi has got back into first place. Richard and Helen not too far behind. Uh, the top five still staying pretty much the same, just a little bit of shuffling going on there. Nathaniel up four places as the highest climber. Uh, so that's good. Well done. Uh, yeah, he would be brilliant, wouldn't he, Dan? I think he'd be really good at that. So let's move on. Next question coming up. And um, who knows the chemical symbols? Uh, so what does the letter K represent in the list of chemical symbols? Is it gadolinium? Is it potassium? Is it krypton? Or is it cadmium? Letter K. What does that represent in the list of chemical symbols? 
she's like a genius, isn't that good? Uh, is it gadolinium, potassium, krypton, or cadmium? Da, 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 da. I think of Ant and Dex Saturday night takeaway. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, John Cleese has definitely played Q in some of the uh, Pierce Brosnan films. Gadolinium, potassium, and krypton, and cadmium. Which one is K in the list of chemical symbols? Hmm, anyone know? Sixteen seconds left. If you're not sure, have a guess. Letter K. And just one letter round. Da, 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 da. Just trying to keep up the chat as well. Forty-one answers in, and it is potassium. Well done. Uh, Thirty-three of you got that right. So uh, absolutely fantastic. Well done. And apparently it's. Um, the other word for potassium is callium, which starts with a K, which is medieval Latin for potash. There you go. So uh, things you learn as you go through. Um, again, uh, getting tired of saying it. Don't put the answers in the chat, please. Thank you very much. Right. So we'll move on to the next question. And uh, uh, oh, Scott. Ah. Uh, you, you, you're going in the right direction, mate. Going in the right direction. Right. Next question coming up. Scrab. Oh, no, hang on. Bald. Bald. We didn't see the bald. There we go. Grassy, Roderick and Helen, Twister, Steve Ash and Penfold making a first appearance in the uh, in the top five. Well done. Uh, leaving it a little bit late, but, yeah, there's only 2,000 points um, separating the first and fifth there, 2,000 and a bit, 2,200. So yeah, that's still yeah, it's still doable. Still doable. Depends how much grassy and Roderick and Helen though. Roderick and Helen really not far behind. They're only three hundred points. Everything to play for. Everything to play for. So Scrabble next. And which is the only letter in Scrabble worth five points? Is it K, H, J, or V? Scrabble. Which letter? is worth five points k h j or v any big scrabble fans out there look at that q and a of the uh q of the letters seem fitting to me don't actually think they're scrabble tiles either to be fair but which is the only scrabble letter that's worth five points k h j or v who's gonna get that one who's not gonna get it Where, where's the scoreboard gonna go Remember, this is uh, what we on round. I can't see my list. Round five. We are on the penultimate round. One more to go. If you've been holding back, now's the time to go for it. Here we go. The answer is K. Yeah, well done. 24 of you getting that right. Uh, the majority of you obviously know your Scrabble. Well done. Uh, and yeah amazingly the only letter worth five in scrabble uh quite controversial that apparently but uh uh, <laughs> uh emma's gonna start teaming up with the gonk uh since she turned earlier yeah emma's just emma put out a, a video on youtube earlier so don't go there now carry on watch carry on to the end but emma's put up a, a video of turning a gonk i haven't seen it yet because i've been busy but uh, that's there if you want to if you want something to do afterwards. Let's see what we've done to the scoreboard. 
Oh, uh, twists and turns up into first place. Grassy Roderick and Helen Steve Ash. Penfold still in fifth. Kevin D back with an answer streak of three. Well done. That's fantastic. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, some of the said everyone wants to ring them on Facebook and tell them the answers. Depends if you know them. All right. So moving on to the next question. Here we go. And it is greek alphabet what is the last letter of the greek alphabet is it sigma omega zeta or epsilon last letter of the greek alphabet mike you've already watched it that was quick that's why you're late here obviously Last letter, Greek alphabet, Sigma, Omega, Zeta, Epsilon. What is it? It's all Greek to me. Sorry, someone had to say it. Yeah, if you don't know, take a guess. I'm positive that uh, there's someone out there clicking one of the buttons as soon as the answers come up regard without actually seeing the answers or even hearing the question just taking a chance on it there is a thousand points per question up for grabs if you get it right now you got a one in four chance if you haven't put your answer in yet and you're still not sure have a guess last letter of the greek alphabet sigma omega zeta epsilon There we go. And the answer is Omega. 26 of you knew that. 26. Now that's funny. The number of letters in uh, in the uh, English alphabet. There you go. 26. But there we are. Um, I thought I'd made Zeta up, but it's the sixth letter. Sigma and Epsilon. No idea where they come. Uh, but uh, yeah, the last letter is Omega. So uh, that's the correct answer. And let's see what that's done to the score. Here we are. Ah. Oh. Grassy back up into the first place. We still don't know who Grassy is. We really need to know that. But um, it's not you, Emma. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Roderick and Helen in second place. Um, Twist and Turns third. Steve Ash and Penfold in fourth. So uh, uh, let's just try and have a quick look through here. Um, just catching up on the, the scoreboard on the uh, chat there right that's fine uh snotty drop uh well done back with an answer streak of three uh great to have you still out there because i i can't tell who's still taking part in the quiz um but we've got 40 odd of you 40 of you out there so that's brilliant thank you very much indeed so we're going to move on to the next question the last question in the just one letter round and here we go and it's what does the f in john f kennedy stand for is it fitzsimmons is it frederick is it fitzgerald or francis john f kennedy what does that f stand for it's always referred to as john f kennedy who knows what the f stands for fitzsimmons frederick fitzgerald or francis Robin, 24th place. That's push about halfway down. So that's fine. Stephen, yeah, think of a colour. That's fine. Purple's not on there, though, so you can't do that. Emma's disappointed. Um, da, 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 da. Chat keeps moving there. John F. Kennedy. There he is on, the, uh, on that coin. I have no idea what coin that is. It's an American one. But what's that F stand for? Fitzsimmons, Fitzgerald, Frederick, or Francis? Last question in this round. I'm falling off the chair. What's the answer? 23 question, 23 seconds left. Six questions left after this one. Da, 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 da. Where are we going to go? Fitzsimmons, Frederick, Fitzgerald or Francis? It's a dime, is it? Thank you very much. A quarter of dime, that same thing, isn't it? um yeah 
there we go the correct answer is fitzgerald and obviously lots of you knew that well done 30 of you getting that right uh fantastic well done and let's move on see what the uh, uh next question next uh what that's done to the scoreboard oh grassy still there uh penfold sneaking into uh fourth place and steve ash in fifth well done there uh four four players on an answer streak of four so getting four questions in a row correct well done indeed and that means that brings us to the end of round five the just one one letter round and next we've got the television round so uh, let's see who's been paying attention when they're watching television actually obviously some of you have been because you've got the um about the glove stretcher so uh yeah brilliant uh, too much time in your hands, obviously, I, I would suspect there. But next up, we've got the television round. So let's get that up and running. Here we go. I Could Be So Good For You was the theme to which TV series? Was it Minder? Was it Two's Company? Robin's Nest or New Tricks? I Could Be So Good For You. Which TV series was that the theme to? Minder, Robin's Nest, Two's Company, or New Tricks? Uh, no Swedish questions, I'm afraid they're cat and fish. Um, I'll, I'll ask my Swedish friend for the next quiz and try and get a, a Swedish, a special Swedish question in there. We did have one, actually. We did have one uh so yeah it's always good when you know the answer isn't it? It, it, it you know a quiz where you can't get any of the questions right oh horrible so uh hopefully some of you, you've all been getting some of them right i could be so good for you which tv series did that come from is it minder two's company robin's nest or new tricks and uh, it did have Dennis Waterman in it. And there's a very young Dennis Waterman in the picture there. Car, ah, how old is that picture? Let's see who's got it right. Ta da. Oh, yeah, Minder. 35, you're getting that one right. So well done. Um, wasn't, well, I don't know. I was going to say it's not particularly difficult, but only, only if you know the answer. So, uh, yeah, if you, uh, if you don't know the answer, they're all difficult questions. So sorry about that. I'm trying to mix it up a little bit for you. All right. Um, Julian, is that the refused that they use his song? Yeah, I thought it finished because it got a bit rubbish and they lost all the uh, original characters, to be honest. But I could be wrong. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on with the, uh, with the next question then. So... Uh, it's coming a little bit more up to uh up to date here and uh oh sorry we didn't do the scoreboard there we go it didn't really make a lot of difference actually because everyone got it right or most of you did tiny tiny turner is making a comeback with three in a row i'm sorry i shouldn't have been quite so surprised about that but uh yeah brilliant well done well done right and next <laughs> boom indeed next question coming up here we go um and it's uh well careful with this one what is the name of carol baskin's dead husband is it uh john finley is it travis maldonado is it joe exotic or is it don lewis carol baskin's dead husband and apologies for the poor punctuation there uh, but is it John Finley, Travis Maldonado, Joe Exotic, or Don Lewis? Is that a great picture, Leona? I, I assume you're referring to the, uh, I don't know, actually. Oh, someone's, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> it's all right, Emma's gonna go back and play that. Uh, over and over again and she's just gonna yeah uh, uh. 
Carol Baskin's dead husband, John Finley, Travis Maldonado, Joe Exotic, Don Lewis. We're on the last round. <laughs> I'm sure you got the last one right, Julian. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, if you're trying to mix it up, you know, be a little bit more uh, up to date with some of these. There we go. The correct answer there, Don Lewis. Well done. 18, the majority of you are getting that right. Well done. Um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I'll be honest, I didn't know either. I had to be told. So, uh, yeah. Um, was her husband not Robbins? Oh, yeah. I had to think about that one, Neil. Very good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> let's see how that's uh, affected the, the uh, leaderboard. Oh, Bill and Patricia sneaking up there. Penfold back down to fifth place. Caitlin's dad making a comeback with three in a row. Uh, I'm going to guess that Emma got that right. So uh, well done. Uh, we can move on to the next question. Um, we're going back in time for this one and the picture is going to mean something to people of my age and uh anyone a lot younger is going to go what who who took over from bob monkhouse as the presenter of the golden shot was it norman vaughan was it bernie the bolt was it charlie williams or was it les dawson the golden shot and there she is Anne aston there in the middle uh, what a program that was. You had to try and direct someone firing a crossbow uh, up a bit, down a bit, left a bit, fire. Yeah. I mean, they don't make them like that anymore, do they? Mind you, some of the stuff they put on nowadays. Yeah. Anyway, Norman Vaughan, Bernie the Bolt, Charlie Williams or Les Dawson, who took over from Bob Monkhouse presenting The Golden Shots? One of those four, but who was it? I'm keeping quiet about my age either. <laughs> Kyle, quiet, yeah. I mean, you know, you had to see it to believe it. People phoning in, direct, you know, taking aim, you know, the camera going through the sights. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> yeah the health and safety with that norman vaughan bernie the bolt charlie williams and les dawson who took over from bob monkhouse let's see I wonder who's going to get this right and how many are going to get this right it was norman vaughan um he took over directly from bob monkhouse um les dawson i think he had to go at it much much later on and uh, Charlie Williams took over from Norman Vaughan. That's a little bit sneaky, please. Uh, a little bit sneaky, actually. So uh, sorry about that. But that's uh, that was the correct answer. Norman Vaughan did it for about a year, I think, uh, after Bob Monkhouse. I think he got kicked off because of uh, they were. He was accused of taking a um, not exactly a bribe, but uh, you know, a product placement, uh, which wasn't allowed at the time. So let's see what happened on the uh, scoreboard there. Grassy, Bill and Patricia into second place now. That's a that's a real um, uh, last minute attack. Broderick and Helen, Penfold, Filed Coast, but Grassy still holding on there, just in first place. Look at that, 550 points from ahead uh, in front of the uh, fifth place there. And Castefi, Castefi, I don't know, sorry, but uh, yeah, up six places, well done. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Here we go. And it's which TV show uses a song by the Bare Naked Ladies as its theme? Is it Future Armor? Is it How I Met Your Mother? Is it The Big Bang Theory or The Goldbergs? Bare Naked Ladies, and I think that's a picture of them. I'm not really sure. I did a search for Bare Naked Ladies. That picture came up first, and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to search for anymore because my browser history is just going to look too dodgy. So Bare Naked Ladies, it is a band, they're Canadian, 
but which theme, which TV show uses their one of their songs as a theme tune? Is it Futurama, How I Met Your Mother, Big Bang Theory, or The Goldbergs? So, uh, who knows their theme tunes? Then you'll have to take a guess. It's definitely one of them, Eva. So, uh, it's definitely one of these, one of these, uh, programs. Futurama, How I Met Your Mother, Big Bang Theory, or the Goldbergs. And it's the Big Bang Theory. 24 of you knew that. Um, it's quite a, a well-known theme tune. Funnily enough, did you know that originally they were going to use uh, She Blinded Me With Science by Thomas Dolby. But for whatever reason, they chose not to, and they went with um, the Big Bang, uh, with the uh, Bare Naked Ladies song. So uh, that was uh, that. Was that. Uh, let's see what that's done to the scoreboard. Bill and Patricia going up into first place. Roderick and Helen in second. Penfold up to third. Grassy down to fourth place. Uh, filed coast there. Tinker, highest climber again, uh, up four places. Tinker keeps having a go there. He keeps coming back. Well done. Uh, that's really good. And, um, yeah, yeah, there's still time. There's still time. I, I don't know what scores other people have got. But, uh, you know, two questions to go. And uh, this one, Emma, are you paying attention? Here we go. In the original TV series of Thunderbirds, Roughly how tall were the marionettes puppets really? Were they 22 inches? Were they 48 inches? They weren't real people? Or were they 10 inches tall? How tall? I mean, they were marionettes, weren't they? Because they had strings. They weren't puppets, but everyone refers to them as puppets. But how tall were they really? Were they 22 inches? So 55 centimeters? 48 inches? 122 centimeters? 10 inches at 25 centimeters or you just can't believe they weren't real people there we are so thunderbirds how tall were they did you know that when they finished making thunderbirds and went on to make captain scarlet they just threw the puppet they just threw them all away they, you know, someone rescued them from a skip outside the film studios. They said, no, don't need them anymore, just chuck them. I mean, what a crime. That's just criminal, absolutely dreadful. So, slightly off the wall question about Thunderbirds. How tall were they? And were they marionettes or puppets? What do we think, people? I'm thinking marionettes. No, is that on Antiques Roadshow? There we are. 22, oh, wow, 22 inches. Lots of you got that right. Well done. Um, no one thought they were real people. What a shame. Um, but, yeah, 22 inches tall. <laughs> well done, Emma. You obviously got that one right. Uh, that's great. So, uh, yeah, 48 inches, that would have been about four foot tall. That would have been uh, um, a bit... Uh, a, a, a bit a bit too bit, bit cumbersome but uh well done everyone 24 of you getting that one right and let's see what that's done to the scoreboard before i, I didn't like to say emma before the um before we get to the very very last question of the quiz right let's see what that's done here here we go da, da, da. <sighs> Bill and Patricia still in first place. Penfold on fire. Answer streak of three into second place. I know who Penfold is, and they're going to be delighted um, uh, at being there. Grassy slipping down into third place, but everyone there. Silk, I think that's your first time on the leaderboard there. So uh, um, 
to the yellow ice technically also be right i can't be that no, i suppose you could say that caitlin but that's uh being too clever um yeah uh still so congratulations getting in there penfold answer streak of three and uh really not far behind it's all to play for on the last question and uh yeah the shadows were indeed and i'm sure pretty, i'm pretty sure cliff richard was also one of the puppets um uh, and penfold yes is a kids tv character you're correct right uh, what did gareth say oh, i missed that one da, 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 da. all right i can't keep up with the chat um right so people are you ready for the last question here we go Ta -da. what color is ivor the engine is he green is he yellow is he blue or is he red ivor the engine because all the colors are in totally the wrong order there and what color is he is he green yellow blue or red subject of lots of uh, discussion in the last quiz so i thought he, he ought to finish everything off ivor the engine what color is he quiet emma green yellow blue or red we had a uh, had a question about um steam locomotives in the last last quiz green yellow blue or red still time to get an answer in there's a few of you who haven't answered yet not much time left three two one and the correct answer is green yep i the engine was green i was a little bit naughty there that was uh, thomas the tank engine in the picture who is blue uh so that was a bit mean that wasn't my suggestion someone said you should put thomas the tank engine in there so uh that's um that's me trying to be a little bit misleading there so well done 23 of you getting that right and uh that was the last question so thank you very much with the the final answers will be revealed in a moment uh, we'll get the top five up and uh yeah um mm, 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 yeah just sort of catching up in the chat there thank you again for coming along tonight and taking part i hope you've enjoyed it uh if you want some more let me know and we'll see if we can do another one but uh, in the meantime let's go to the uh let's take that out let's put that on there i can't see the screen and let's find let's get the uh the podium here we go are you ready uh last time i forgot to put it on the screen so it's definitely on the screen this time here we go da -da. here's the podium in third place penfold 27 out of 36 roderick and helen in second place and in third place first place bill and patricia well done now look at that that's how the uh the silk in fourth place twists and turns in fifth place and once again that's the uh that's the way the kahoot works it out penfold there in third place actually got 27 out of 36 but instead um bill and patricia with 26 out of 36 going into first place Roderick and helen 26 out of 36 in second place I know there's going to be a steward's inquiry about this later on. So uh, really going to struggle with that one. So uh, I clicked the wrong button there. Hang on. I, I can't see the screen. <laughs> Congratulations, Bill and Patricia. Uh, Grassy, what happened to Grassy? Where did, where did he go? um we lost you bill and patricia you need to let me know what uh charity you'd like the 50 pound to go to please if you know already you can put it in the uh, in the chat or you can just drop me an email uh via chestnut products uh, i'm trying to keep up with that da, 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 da. yeah so 
people thank you very much for coming along tonight i hope you enjoyed that that was good fun we've got 70 of you out there so that's really good fun and uh uh, da, 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 um, mm, 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 yeah i'm just reading it and uh yeah well done everyone on the podium well done everyone so uh i will be going through later on finding out uh what the <laughs> what the scores are steve gibson is seventh well done that's uh good going um uh, da, da, da. i'm glad that your kahoot problems didn't spoil the evening for you alan that's all going through too quickly for me to catch up on i will read through them later on uh that uh and uh yeah so don't forget people we've got um emma cook demonstrating for us uh hopefully doing better than she's done in the quiz sorry emma on uh on thursday starting at 7 15 same format as tonight on youtube all free um no signups no nothing if you haven't signed up for our uh, our newsletters and our bulletins about what we get up to online then just pop over to our website have a look around you'll find it there somewhere and uh, just sign up uh kevin not promising a, a quiz in february uh got lots going on in february already um emma if you could that would be brilliant uh, i would love to see that um so yeah uh really have had a, a great time but uh really congratulations to everyone on the podium there let's uh wherever done with that um hmm. i've lost my screen hang on a second da, da, da. but let's uh let you relive the um the glory there uh of the podium so penfold i'm sorry what can i say roderick and helen well done in the second place and uh first place there well done to bill and patricia and uh yeah I need to know uh, uh, cancer research. Okay, yep, that will happen, Bill. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we will. Uh, I will get that done for you. Uh, cancer research. Yep, I will. Uh, that's nice and easy. Should be able to find them and get that done. So let's uh, come back on here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Right. Okay. <laughs> Just reading the uh just reading the comments uh yeah it was a great evening thanks the, the chat makes it really enjoyable uh, it's somewhat distracting so if i've been uh, distracted by that i do apologize but uh it has been great you've uh, been out there for over two hours now thank you very much indeed uh, thanks for joining me uh, if you weren't there it would all be a waste of time so i'm really really pleased you're there uh, I'm sure there will be some more to come in the future. And at some point, we will be uh, announcing what's happening about the, the wood turning weekend of this year. Because we're really not sure because everything's up in the air. And this all started because if we'd have had the wood turning weekend uh, uh, in August last year, we'd have uh, had a, a pub quiz in the evening. So uh, that didn't happen. So we've taken it online and uh and here it is so uh this is the third one now and uh i'm just reading the i'm just reading the chat going through there so it has been has been great fun um i can't show the result i can't show the results on screen on lawrence unfortunately um if you didn't if you didn't see where you came if you're not sure how you did then let me know and i'll uh, i can i can look it up and let you know but i can't show it on screen and uh, i'm not entirely sure that would be in fair uh, i'm sure no one would really mind that much um ah uh, scott lemon oil lemon oil, it will make the floor really clean it will do a good job of that for you so uh that's absolutely yeah that's that's good um but yeah i, I wish i could show the the full list but i can't but uh i will be checking through it later on just to make sure it's all okay so i know i'm going to be getting some grief from penfold later on and um what can you say but cancer research is the real winner tonight 50 pound that will be gift aided so they'll get the uh, the tax element back on that as well and uh yeah thank you again for, for joining in i am going to close this down in just a couple of minutes um in fact what i'll do i will leave this i'll, I'll take myself off screen because i need to go and get something to eat uh i will uh da, 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 i will take that um 
uh, oh, sorry, just reading the, the comments again. Uh, take yourself off screen. I'll leave the podium back on there so that uh, you can bask in your glory if you wish. I'll leave this running for another five minutes or so in case you want to just put anything into the chat. So again, thank you so much for being out there tonight and joining in. It's been great fun and uh, take care and hope to see you. Really do hope that uh, towards the end of the year can see you all in person. We could do something together. Wouldn't that be great? I really miss getting out on the road and seeing people. Right, there's gonna ha let's hope it happens this year. There does seem to be some light at the end of the tunnel. So, good night, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out, well, for staying at home, whatever. Thank you so much for being there, and uh, I will see you soon, I hope. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>